In this episode of Sailing Dark Angel, we discover flooding in our starboard bilge. Fixing the power supply isn't enough to solve the problem. I need another coffee. If you like our videos, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. It's free for you and really helps our channel. Welcome to Sunday morning. This morning we have a project planned that we're going to be taking this bilge pump that's down here that was just chock full of water last night that I had to pump out. And we're going to, Dave is going to check the wires and make sure that it's getting enough power. And we're so motivated this morning. <laughs> I checked the wires, there's not enough power. We have to trace the wires back to the source and find out why there's not 12 volts on it and probably run a new feed. I'm With his right eyes shut, that. apparently. I'm getting right on that right now. I'm, I'm planning it. I'm planning well, see, I was planning on having a coffee. I don't know about you. <laughs> so I'm going to make coffee. You want to come with me and make coffee? Let's go make coffee. <laughs> so I'm tired. It's early on a Sunday morning. So we open this up. Trusty, dusty coffee pot. That on. Turn that and turn this and then like that to make it stay. We use this and we set that on top of there. Just like that over the beans. Harf and harf. There you go. In, in turbulencies, obviously, I wouldn't be doing any of this because I don't want to end up burning myself because <laughs> that would suck huge. Was it Sophie that burned herself? Yep. And she's on the monohull. Mm -hmm. The best thing that we can do is learn from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be at the show. Are they? Sophie, yeah. Really? Yeah. I like her. That's good. This is my coffee cup that I use every single day. Most likely twice a day, but at least once a day. Be naughty. Cheers. Get yours in pink, red, or black. It's bilge time. We've had an issue since we got the boat on this side with the bilge pump not running the way it should. Now on the port side, it runs great. When we fill up our water tanks, I think we have a small leak somewhere because every time we do a big fill up of our starboard water tank, we end up with water in the bilge and it's clear, clean water, but it's in the bilge. And it doesn't pump out on its own, which means we have to manually pump it out. So we're gonna take a look today at the source of power for the 12 volt bilge pump. We replaced the bilge pump in this boat when we first got it, because this side wasn't pumping out properly. The pump would barely run. But when we replaced the pump, we had the same issue. So we've been manually keeping our bilges clear using the hand pump. Not practical, obviously, especially if you're away from the boat any length of time. Now, the only time we really get any water in the bilge is when we shower. I think we have a loose clamp on our shower box. And when we fill our forward water tank on the starboard side, we get water in the bilge. Obviously, we have a bad connection somewhere, a loose clamp or a bad hose or whatever. And that's a huge job to run. But in the meantime, we need to get this bilge so that the bilge pump pumps it out instead of pumping manually. Whenever we get water in here, it is clean water, so it's coming either from the shower or from the water tank. But it still needs to get off the boat. And it still needs to get off the boat automatically. So we're gonna open up our bilge. We've got our manual pump and our automatic pump. And all the wiring down here is just a mess. We need to take this bilge pump out and disconnect it and trace the wires back this runs into a harness and that's what makes it fun because we got to chase that harness back and find out where the power is ah. all right that's gross so the connections are solder sealed and therefore theoretically waterproof i swear to god this whole boat is held together with zip ties well it is all right so here's kind of what we're dealing with this was over top of these wires, so I hadn't seen these connections before. This seems okay. That does not, look at that. So there's probably a broken wire or a bad connection there. This wire here, not bad there, but this shrink wrap over top, that's not watertight. That's just shrink wrap. And look, there's like that's where the wires are just knotted together. 
so that's all got to be cut off. These are the connections I did that are watertight solder seal connection. And this one's broken. So solder seal is not ideal for in here. Should be crimped and sealed. We're going to take them all back to here. And we're going to take these back to here. It's a good thing that we have extra in there, right? Yep. Like extra and then room. we're going to connect it up. Okay. Stuff, move and stuff. Ugh. Well, the boat doesn't stink. Yeah. It's going to be a long day. Alright. Electrical and plumbing stuff to keep in there. Mm -hmm. You get the <laughs> red handled wire stretcher. So I don't have extend one. Extend these cables out a little bit. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, uh, something's crying. Works. You hear that, guys? That's different. It's working. Where's the sensor for the water? It's built into the bilge pump. Okay, but I mean, like, where? Do you know? Uh, it's in the bottom of the bilge pump. It's a float switch. Okay, is there water underneath it or no? No. It shouldn't be trying to run right now. So this all came to a head because this morning I opened that up because uh, I get these feelings that uh, you got to look, time to look. And that thing was just full of water. And it took me about five minutes to pump it all out manually, which is really bad because I don't know the length of time it took to, for it to fill up. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, jeez. Not much water being in the bottom of your boat like that? Mm -mm. That's it's not good. good. No, you don't want water coming into your boat. No. And if it does come in, you want it pumped out. Yeah. The damage it would do to the floors and the electronics and everything. Oh my gosh. That's a positive sound. So what, you just need to snap it back down in there and... Yep. Are you going to put the loom back on? Yep. Alright, there's the mess in the bilge. We've got to get this all cleaned up. There's our fresh connections on the wires. We'll put the split loom on if this thing works. If it doesn't work, then we're back to square one. So this thing drops into a little tray. I hear the float switch clicking back and forth. So what is that like thinking about it? I don't know what it's doing. So that's how high the water has to be to activate. And this was in the way. So the two things, the two items here are in each other's way. So it's going to take it down to about an inch deep because it's sitting on a platform and then bolted through the platform and then sitting on top of that. So that's about as deep as it reaches. Whereas this one is much deeper. So the automated build pump is going to move an inch of water in the bottom. So what has happened? So you're saying that that, that what you're fishing through should just automatically fish all the way through that plastic hose is Without what you're saying? Without any problem at all. But there's something that's preventing it. Yeah, which means we're going to need to replace this off. See how it's stuck? Mm hmm. Something is definitely choking it. Because mm. that should slide freely through there, and it really does not. There's a lot of buildup in the hose. 
Here you go. Here's your weird tool. So the, that's rude. So the uh, this hose is very, very common hose for plumbing on a boat. It's a common size. It's a common type. It's so common that everybody here is out of stock. We went to three different places and nobody got it. So rather than leaving a hole in the side of the boat over there with nothing on it, we came up with plan B. We're going to try and snake it and see if we can get it cleared out enough that uh, it'll pump water through it. So show them your weird tool. It's not that kind of show. <laughs> what does it do? It's just a snake, like a regular plumbing snake. Yeah, but it's like a... Upside of this is we can use it for the uh, scuppers that we're having issues with too. Blocking the water and blocking everything else. Your attitude. <laughs> there it is. It poked right out like a turtle. <laughs> so, how much did we pay for that? And then again, we're going to use it on the scupper. So. Hey, it just worked. I don't know what you're complaining about. Looks we've tested the automatic pump, it works. The only holdup is this hose. If we get that beat, we're going to have us bilge pump, like functional and everything. It's going to come out that, won't it? Yep. There it is. So it'll probably do that every couple of minutes or so. Just, just leave that in there. Just leave it there. I was going to make soup. Ew. Don't. You make my stomach hurt. <laughs> Alright, so. What type of tool is that? It's a heat gun. Yeah. Battery operated heat gun. zip tie this and that'll be a wrap we can move on to the next one because there's plenty <laughs>